friends, it's Carla, your online doctor, with today's Live in 5. Today is Thursday, October 29th, and it is 5 p.m. So, have you heard of challenge trials, okay, that deliberately infect volunteers with the hope of accelerating the development of vaccines? Okay, the United Kingdom will be doing this for COVID-19. They will invest about 33 plus million pounds, equal to almost $44 million, in the Human Challenge Trials in partnership with Imperial College London. Okay, laboratory company HVivo and the Royal Free London NHS Foundation Trust. Okay, if approved by regulators and an ethics committee. The studies will start in January and results expected by May 2021. Now, using controlled doses of virus, the aim of the research team will initially be to discover the smallest amount of virus it takes to cause a COVID-19 infection. Okay, they're going to be doing this in small groups of healthy young people ages between 18 and 30. Okay, obviously they're using that group. Those are the ones who are lowest risk for uh, harm. Of course, we can't ever say who will have a bad reaction or a bad infection or a bad response or whatever. But in general, 18 to 30 year olds do fairly well. Now, up to 90 volunteers could be involved at the initial stages, yet if they feel, <laughs> Ethically, if you are deliberately infecting someone with a potentially deadly disease for which there is currently no effective or guaranteed effective treatment, is that ethical? Okay. The plan is to treat anyone that gets infected with remdesivir as soon as they are infected. So yes, you're positive, you have the infection. Okay, we're going to start remdesivir. They feel if given right away, it will be an effective treatment. I don't know why they feel that way. Um, it is not a guarantee. It has been showing to improve people's conditions, but it's not like, hey, if you give it on day one, you're gonna be 100% fine in two days, okay? But human challenge trials don't end there, okay? More than 30, 32,000 people have already signed up from around the world to be given a COVID vaccine and then challenge them with the real virus to see if it works. Okay, meaning they don't get infected once exposed to the live virus. Now the scary part of this is in animal trials over the past 17 years, that is the point where the trials have failed. Meaning people have gotten the vaccine, animals got the vaccine, developed an antibody response, and then when exposed to the wild virus, um, they died, okay? So 32,000 people may not know that, but are signing up for the COVID vaccine and the challenge to be exposed to the virus. Now these studies or challenge trials will be small groups of about, not that particular one, but of 150 participants instead of thousands needed for phase three trials and will get results faster. They say six weeks compared to six months. Yet in fact, if proven deadly, it could be even faster than that, right? Clearly the consent form needs to emphasize that death is a real potential risk. I know many of us go in for procedures, anesthesia, surgery, whatever, and death is always on the consent form, but you never, you know, I mean, if you're going in for a minor procedure, you're going in to get a hernia, a gallbladder, you're getting a, an orthopedic procedure, you never really think that it's a true possibility. In this case, my friends, it just might be. Now, the FDA views human challenge trials as a last resort, meaning if it is no longer possible to demonstrate vaccine effectiveness by way of conducting clinical disease endpoint efficacy studies. So, if we continue with these trials and we're just not getting the numbers they want to see, the FDA may say, last resort, let's do it, okay? 
four potential trials of this type are are already in the works to begin before 2021. AstraZeneca is one of them. They may have already um, their first death of this nature. Um, again, it, they're saying it, this 28-year-old vaccine trial candidate that died in Brazil, um, he's a frontline doctor who may have been exposed to the real virus. AstraZeneca, I haven't seen any comment from them. Word is in the, uh, um, in the media that this 28-year-old was actually in the placebo group. AstraZeneca, as far as I can find, has yet to confirm that. So if he was in fact in the placebo group, then he may have died from complications of COVID-19 outside of getting the vaccine. But if he was in fact a vaccine recipient and was exposed to the real virus and died, all thoughts and questions need to be to come out, okay? Um, so on that note, it's a very um, scary proposition Again, I know many of my friends who say that they would get a vaccine, and I know many of my friends who say, <laughs> heck no, not going to be one putting their arm out for that one. So if you want to comment and keep it civil, put it in the comments. Otherwise, it's still up in the air. We, don't, we just don't know what's going to happen with all of this. I myself would never sign up for a challenge trial. I would never let anybody I know that I love do it without <laughs> me giving them a few words of advice. Anyway, on that note, I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you again tomorrow for another Live in 5.